Hello and welcome to this informational webinar series brought to you by On Life Health. I'm your host, Michael Detner, and today's topic is stress. To say that life can be stressful is an understatement. Job pressures, family issues, relationship problems, financial worries, health concerns, these are all examples of situations that contribute to increasing stress levels. If, over time, this stress continues to build, it can have some very negative effects on your health. While stressful situations are inevitable in modern life, there are healthy ways to react to them. Today's presenter is Anna Pace. Anna has worked as a dedicated health coach here at On Life Health for about 10 months. She has a bachelor's degree in dietetics from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and a master's degree from the State University of New York in nutrition. This fall, she will complete her training as a yoga instructor. Anna enjoys sharing her passion for healthy living with a holistic approach, recognizing the importance of mind and body wellness. She has found that overcoming obstacles, like stress, is often the foundation that is necessary in guiding others on their own unique journey to healthy living. And now, please welcome Anna Pace. Thank you so much, Michael. It is a pleasure to be here today to discuss with you all reacting to stressful situations. Um, stress is a normal part of life, and it is something that we are pre-wired with, dating back from our ancestors, when stress was necessary for survival. Although the things that cause stress in life today are different from what our ancestors experienced years ago, the way our body responds is still the same. Nobody enjoys being stressed, but since it is an, un an unavoidable part of life, what if you chose to learn how to respond differently to the stress in life? Rather than fighting stress and allowing it to harm you physically and emotionally, what if you transformed your relationship with stress? Stress will always be a part of life, but it is what you do with the stress that determines your overall well-being and your resilience. So what is stress? Your body works really hard to keep things in balance, and this is known as homeostasis, or just maintaining a stable internal environment. So it's like your body's natural state, and it doesn't want things to be too high or too low. Um, so things like our body temperature, blood sugar, heart rate, um, you know, our body works really hard to keep those in balance. Um, it's kind of like your home's thermostat. You, know, you set your temperature to a certain, or you set your thermostat to a certain temperature, and the air or heat turns on or off to control that temperature to remain at that desired level. A stressor is anything that shifts you out of homeostatic balance. So stress is not our natural state then why do we have stress if it's not our natural state? Well, believe it or not, stress is not always a bad thing. Um, stress can give you the energy to get things accomplished, provide motivation, and as our ancestors experienced, can be necessary for survival. This kind of stress is called eustress. And eustress is considered to be a reaction to a short-term situation, but then balance is restored once the situation is over. So, for example, our ancestors likely encountered interactions with dangerous wildlife as they were hunting, gathering, or performing other tasks necessary for survival. Let's say they were to encounter a bear. We would hope this would trigger a stress response to either fight or flee. Either some way, um, either way, some sort of reaction was necessary for their survival, and stress gave them the energy and focus to survive. So your body responds to stressful experiences with a fight or flight response in order to restore balance. And this allows us to mobilize a lot of energy quickly in order to cope with threats, either to fight the impending threat or to flee away from it. The entire body is involved to prepare to handle the danger. And when a stressor occurs, the body quickly releases stress hormones and your heartbeat increases, your breathing increases, your large muscles receive more oxygen, and all of this happens without you controlling it. It's automatic. And once the stressor is gone, homeostatic balance is normally restored. But what if balance didn't restore itself? Stress becomes harmful when you keep the stress response on all the time. If you are continuously worrying about or waiting for stressful events, um, often unconsciously, your stress response gets stuck in the on position. You remain in a state of fight or flight, and this is known as um, chronic stress. 
And this is not sustainable. So before too long, there will be negative repercussions um, of chronic stress. In today's time, most people are not in danger of being eaten by bears. Many people, however, are now getting stressed for reasons that are not necessarily life or death. But rather, the stress response is turned on for psychological reasons, such as memories, thoughts, worries, and feelings. This is known as distress. Even though modern situations are different, the internal response to stress is the exact same today. Work stress, for example, is a common condition in our culture. Some work stress can be good at times, some the you stress. It can help you meet deadlines, it allows for professional growth and development, gives you the focus and ability to make quick decisions, it provides the energy to get through challenging situations. But when there is no off switch for that work stress, when your work invades every aspect of your life, the stress takes a toll on a physical and emotional level. The yerkes dotsons curve depicts the spectrum of stress really well. Um, on one end, we have no stress. Um, just like the, what these women in the picture here appear to be bored, unmotivated, maybe under-challenged. And with this level of arousal, they would get nothing done. On the other end, there's too much stress. This gentleman appears to be in distress um, with a lot of level of pressure, high levels of pressure. Um, he may also be unable to get anything done um, due to the harmful effects of chronically high stress. But somewhere in the middle, with moderate stress, performance is found to be best, when we are motivated enough to produce results, but not completely overwhelmed. So when a stressful situation arises, a signal is sent to the hypothalamus region of the brain. This acts like the body's command center, and it communicates to the rest of the body that it needs to prepare for the flight or fight. The sympathetic nervous system, which acts like the body's gas pedal, is turned on, which causes adrenaline to be released. So this is when breathing, blood pressure, heartbeat, and blood flow are all increased. The heart beats faster to push muscles, to, um, to push blood to muscles and vital organs, and blood sugar is released into the bloodstream to provide extra energy. So physically, all of our body systems organs and tissues are affected. These physical changes use up a great deal of energy and that means there is less energy available for the larger portion of your brain, the part of the brain that is responsible for thinking, reasoning, decision making, and emotional control. And all of this happens without you even being aware of it. The outcomes do affect your behaviors, your emotions, and your mood. So the nervous system begins the fight or flight response. The increased heart rate, elevated blood pressure, change in the digestive process, and release of glucose into the bloodstreams. And this is necessary to fight the immediate threat or to flight or flee from it. But once the bear runs away and the immediate threat is no longer present, homeostatic balance should be restored. But what if you get stuck in that state of fight or flight? If your stress responses turn on all the time due to chronic stress, this is where you begin to experience wear and tear on all of your body systems. Your cardiovascular system works very hard in response to stress. Your heart rate increases and you get stronger muscle contractions of the heart to keep blood flowing to the large muscles. If your cardiovascular system were constantly working at this rate, it could lead to increased inflammation in the coronary arteries and increase your risk of heart disease. As your breathing increases, your respiratory system is affected. For those who have asthma, COPD, or other respiratory disorders, this can make their symptoms worse. And for people, for some people, the feelings of hyperventilation may bring on panic attacks. Your endocrine system is responsible for the stress hormones um, to be released, uh, the cortisol or epinephrine, which triggers the release of blood glucose into your bloodstream. And this can make managing diabetes quite a struggle under chronic stress. Depression, anxiety, personality changes, and sleep disturbances have all been linked to stress. Your muscles tense up under stress, so a constant, frequent contraction of muscles can lead to muscle tension, headaches, and other musculoskeletal conditions. 
Your gastrointestinal system is affected through your food choices, the quantity of food eaten or not eaten, and this can influence heartburn or chronic heartburn leading to gastroesophageal reflux disease. Some may experience nausea, vomiting, or stomach pain. And stress affects digestion, your ability to absorb nutrients adequately, and many may notice a change in how quickly food moves through the body and may develop irritable bowel syndrome. Your reproductive system is also affected by stress. In men, chronic stress can impair the production of testosterone and sperm. In women, stress can influence their menstrual cycles, causing irregular, absent, or painful periods. And sexual dysfunction often occurs in both men and women under chronic stress. Stress affects everything, the way you eat, your exercise habits, and your sleep, which can lead to weight gain or unintentional weight loss. There's also evidence that stress can accelerate aging by 9 to 17 years. And according to the American Psychological Association, stress is having quite an effect on Americans today. 75% of Americans reported regularly experiencing physical symptoms caused by stress. 73% of Americans reported regularly experiencing psychological symptoms caused by stress. And 54% of Americans reported that stress causes them to fight with people close to them, um, which is affecting their personal and professional life in a negative way. This is also coming at a cost to employers. Um, it's been found that it costs employers $300 billion in stress-related health care costs um, and also missed work. And again, stress today is often turned on for those psychological reasons, memories, thoughts, emotions, and feelings like fear and anger. The top causes of stress um, in the U.S. today are job pressure, money, health, relationships, poor nutrition, media overload, and sleep deprivation. And you know, it is not stress that kills us, it's our reaction to it. You can't always avoid stress, but you can choose how you respond to it. And when you choose to respond um, and cope with stress through alcohol, tobacco, drugs, making poor food choices, or maybe not even eating at all, this actually keeps your body in a stress state. And when we are unable to find tranquility within ourselves, it is useless to seek it elsewhere. Seeking comfort outside of ourselves will not reduce stress, but rather increase it and lead to more health problems. So many of the things that are causing stress today, jobs, relationships, health, um, these things are not entirely under your control. And learning to let go of the things beyond your control and taking a closer look at how your stress is affecting you me mentally physically and emotionally is one key to transforming your relationship with stress. So let's begin with mindfulness. Practicing mindfulness rather than mindlessness enables a moment-to-moment -moment awareness of thoughts, feelings, and your surroundings. And this level of awareness will allow you to live in the present rather than the past or the future and give you the opportunity to respond appropriate, appropriately for each unique experience. Getting stuck in autopilot, mindlessly responding to situations in the same way over and over again won't allow anything to change. You can't continue doing the same thing and expect different results. Pay attention on purpose so you don't miss opportunities to behave effectively. Practicing mindfulness actually exercises the brain in a way that engages that part of the brain involved in decision making, rationalization, reasoning. Um, and activates the parasympathetic, um, which if you remember earlier us discussing the, the sympathetic system, which acts like our body's gas pedal and turned everything on, the parasympathetic system acts like our body's brake pedal. So it actually silences the, the stress response. So mindfulness has influence on social, emotional, and physical outcomes. To practice mindfulness, take time to notice what you are thinking, what you are feeling, and what's going on in your environment. Notice these things without judgment. Just simply notice and accept them for what is true in that moment. A daily mindful meditation practice can help you tap into this skill and allow this to eventually transcend into other moments in life, such as a stressful day at work. 
A mindful meditation um, can begin simply by just noticing what thoughts are going through your mind, what smells, sights, sounds, feelings are happening in that moment. And just allow yourself to notice them without feeling a need to control them one way or another, without judging them as right or wrong, without the urge to fix or change anything. So when you encounter a stressful day at work, you can be more mindful about the situation, how the situation is affecting you and or others, and how you need to respond. Mindfulness will also bring more awareness to the things in your life that are causing you stress. And an increased awareness will help to realign your thoughts, emotions, and nervous system. This is essential to bring each situation into perspective and to notice how you allow the stress to affect you. Bring the same awareness to how you are responding to the stress in your life. Although you may not have control over every situation, you are free to choose your response. In deciding to bring more awareness to the stress in your life and how you want to respond will help you become a more resilient person. And what do I mean by resilience? Um, well, resilience can be defined as um, being able to bounce back from adversity um, and recover quickly from difficulties. So people who are resilient have lower levels of stress and an increased sense of well-being. Psychologists have found resilient people to share common traits. And these are positive attitudes, optimism, and emotional control. They also view failures as opportunities to learn. Even in the face of difficult times, possessing this outlook will enable you to carry on through challenges and possibly come out even stronger in the end. One person specifically comes to mind in my past experience as a health coach who truly exemplifies resilience. During our first encounter, I learned that she had recently been a victim of a medical error where she was given the wrong medication. The permanent effects of this mistake were not yet known, and the only comforting news she, she received from doctors was that, was, was that she would probably be okay. But they weren't certain what the future repercussions would be. She felt fear every day, just not knowing. This stressor was on top of other family issues that had recently come up, and not to mention the everyday demands of her job. She described it as the worst year of her life. We discussed some ways that she could cope with her current situation, and by the, our next call, she acknowledged that the stress was still there, but despite dealing with the same health issues, she was learning to let go. In our last conversation, she was still frequently visiting the doctors for treatments of the medical error, and she still doesn't know what her health will look like in three or four months or even a year from now. But despite one hard thing after another, she told me, I still have today. I still have my family. I get to go to work. I don't see it as I have to go to work. She chooses to focus on the positives, focus on what she still can do today, and how she still can take care of herself mentally by letting go, physically through taking regular walks and, and making healthy eating choices, and emotionally through her supportive husband. She has that infectious personality that others notice something is different about her. She is a great example of resilience. And being resilient is not something that you're born with. It's not something that comes about with luck. Becoming resilient must be learned and intentionally pursued. Can you think of anyone in your life who paints a portrait of a resilient person? Maybe someone you're already close with, or, or maybe someone you've never met, like a celebrity or a well-known figure. Try to find a role model to guide you in exploring resiliency, to learn more about what this looks like and how it can change your perception. Your reality is as you perceive it to be. So it is true that by altering this perception, we can alter our reality. How are you allowing your situation, your circumstances, to affect you? Are you choosing to look at the bigger picture and align your actions with the things that you value and that matter most in life to you? So just as there are mental, physical, and emotional responses to stress that occur in our body, there are mental, physical, and emotional practices that can shift your perspective, allow you to cope with the demands of life, reduce the impact of stress on your health, and to become more resilient. 
each of these aspects are all interconnected, and this holistic approach to stress management will promote more balance in life and optimal health and wellness. So what lies behind the eyes holds more power than what is in front of them. And it all starts in your mind. Your thoughts direct your words. Your words direct your actions. Your actions become your habits, and this ultimately becomes your destiny. Mentally, paying attention to your thoughts can be a really powerful way to transform your perspective. The thoughts you feed yourself and choose to nurture play a big role in shaping your beliefs, behaviors, and your overall outlook on life. Choosing to reframe negative thoughts into positive ones can greatly influence the effect stressful situations can have in your life. Instead of thinking, I can't do this, tell yourself, I'll do the best I can. When you begin to think everything is going wrong, tell yourself, I can handle this if I take one step at a time. And when you encounter a situation that causes you to think, I hate it when this happens, remind yourself that I know how to deal with this, I've done it before. Practice this positive self-talk and reframing negative thoughts into positive thoughts. Rather than letting situations beyond your control interfere with the joy you could be experiencing in life, why not try focusing more on the positive things you do have and the many things you do have to be grateful for? Practicing gratitude can help you acknowledge the good, which in turn can bring you happiness, reduce anxiety and depression, improve relationships, and help you to release those negative thoughts that are no longer serving you anymore. So family, friends, food, shelter, and having a job to support yourself and or your family are just a few of those special things in life that are often taken for granted. Don't just go through the motions in life. Make a conscious decision to become happier and more grateful. Learn to savor the precious moments in life that surround you every day, rather than allowing stress to rob you of experiencing the simple pleasures in life. Even the little things like a good friend, a beautiful sunrise, a cool, crisp breeze, or a moment of peace and quiet, notice those things and choose to savor them. Keeping a gratitude journal can be a great way to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Make note of those things you already have that you are grateful for, the little surprises you may have encountered throughout the day, and recognize how different your life would be without those things. Our anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strengths. Physically, there are many things you can do to manage stress. There are routine or daily physical practices, as well as things that can help in the moment of stressful situations. These can be referred to as emergency stress stoppers. Routinely, physical activity is really, really important. Um, so get active. Increase your physical activity, whatever type you enjoy most. Whether you enjoy formal exercise in a weight room or walking through the woods, Increased movement can help take your mind off your stressor and naturally produce feel-good chemicals in your brain. Practicing yoga is also a great way to engage in physical activity, as well as the mind-body connection. Nourishing your body with healthy food choices is also an important step in stress management. Start your day with a healthy breakfast and continue to fuel your day with well-balanced meals, including plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy, and lean protein. Spend time doing the things you enjoy, like gardening, painting, sewing, reading, sports, or other hobbies you enjoy. Uh, make time to do these things that are important to you, the things that make you happy and fulfilled. Finding time for regular relaxation to let go and remind your body what it feels like to relax um, is so important. If your body is in a state of chronic stress, it often forgets how to relax or even how to get to a relaxed state. And just like all things, the more you practice, the easier it will become. So try setting aside a few moments each day to practice intentional relaxation. Make your environment very calming and try to engage one of your senses in a pleasing way. So dim down the lights, light a candle, play some soothing music smell a pleasant scent, visualize a place of beauty, or take a warm bath, and allow yourself to relax. 
Um, the breath might be a very helpful practice here um, to just invite more relaxation into your life and remind your body what it feels like to relax. Give yourself that gift. And sleep is also very important to allow your body and mind time to rest and recover. Aim for at least eight hours of sleep each night. Establishing a bedtime routine, practicing some of that relaxation before bed, and limiting screen time from TVs and computers before going to bed may help program your body's internal clock and sleep cycle. It is also very helpful to have emergency stress stoppers um, to help you handle stress on the spot. Focusing on the breath can be a powerful practice to reduce stress, especially in the moment of overwhelming situations. Next time you feel yourself falling into a stressful state of mind, try stopping and taking a deep inhale, allowing fresh oxygen to fill every cell of your body, slow your heart rate down, clear your mind, and then take a deep exhale. Release all the tension, worry, and negative energy of that moment. This can often ground you to the present moment and help gather the strength needed at that time. And your breath is with you wherever you go. Another tactic is to separate yourself. In other words, walk away. Give yourself a few moments to cool off. Separating yourself from a tense moment will help give you space to choose how you want to respond, rather than reacting out of those stressful emotions. Walking away for a moment can help you to separate that urge to act from the reaction. Try going for a walk. Just like routine physical activity can help, sneaking away for a quick stroll can help re-energize to handle situations with a new perspective. And your grandmother might have told you to count to 10, and it turns out she was right. Counting to 10, again, can give you some time to regroup, let go, and move on. And emotionally, um, having a healthy emotional outlet is essential for letting go of stress. You are more likely to develop stress-related problems if you feel you have no outlet. Connecting with others in meaningful relationships and feeling supported in this life is, very, is a very important aspect of feeling loved and purposeful. Having someone to talk to when needed or just to spend time with um, can really help with stress. Writing your thoughts and feelings down on paper can also be a great emotional outlet. And so keeping a journal or making a list, writing words of gratitude and affirmation can also help release bottled up emotions and allowing more room for positive thoughts to direct your behavior. And laughter really is the greatest medicine. So aim to find that childlike heart to lighten up your life, to not take things so seriously, and to find humor in life. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. And working with a health coach may be just what you need to get started with a plan to manage your stress. A health coach can help you to identify your stressors, to help you set up boundaries and come up with a plan to protect yourself from getting trapped in the cycle of chronic stress, and to learn coping and relaxation skills to help meet the demands of your life. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed with stress, stop. Stop and bring awareness to that present moment. Take a deep breath, grounding yourself in the present moment, connecting with that present moment. Observe what thoughts and feelings are going on inside. What am I doing? What are others feeling or doing? What's going on around me? Observe and notice without judgment. And then proceed in a positive way, in a way that is most effective, and in a way that's not necessarily how you initially felt or wanted to respond. To experience peace does not mean that your life is always blissful. It means that you are capable of tapping into a blissful state of mind amidst the normal chaos of a hectic life. You have the power to transform your relationship with stress. With practice, you can see your life through a new lens. If you wait until this happens or that changes, you will never be released from the chains of stress. Rather than placing pressure on external factors to determine your happiness and quality of life, recognize that you have the ability to live the life you want and to stop allowing stress to negatively impact your health. 
right now and no matter what lies in your future. So thank you so much for your time today. And, and if you guys would like to learn more information about this subject, here are some great resources um, to, to go in a little more detail about some of the things we've touched on today. Thank you, Anna, very, very much for all the, the, the hard work and research that you put into this. It was, it was really fascinating. It, it seems like we've sort of just scratched the surface here. I'm hoping that uh, maybe in the coming weeks or months we might be able to do kind of a, a sequel or two uh, because it seems that stress management is that important. So hopefully we can do that. Uh, just a couple thoughts. Uh, Anna, you mentioned that the body increases glucose or the blood sugar in the bloodstream when a person is under a lot of stress. So would you say that it's true that at least in some way or the other that stress can make you fat? That's a great question, Michael. And you know, yes and no. Of course, you know, we did kind of mention how stress affects everything. So in eating choices, eating habits is one of those ways that um, many people do respond to stress. So of course if you were um, overeating or making poor food choices in response to stress, that can lead to weight gain. Um, and there's also some new research out there that is showing, um, you know, certain taste receptors um, are, are, are influenced by stress, and particularly the, the sweet, the taste sweet. So many people might find that they are overindulging in the sweets in response to stress, which of course could lead to weight gain. And as far as the glucose or the glucose being released into the bloodstream, again, that is just um, particularly um, important for those trying to manage um, diabetes to take into consideration because um, that could um, make it challenging to, to keep those blood sugars um, well managed if they're just in a state of chronic stress. That's true. I, I heard a, re a report actually on the way to, to work today uh, uh, about some new research on uh, the epidemic of, of diabetes that we have in this country and, and how we're headed towards something much, much worse and very, very costly. And of course, while, while you know, proper diet and exercise is, is necessary when, when dealing with, with any health issue actually, uh, particularly with diabetes, one thing that really needs to, to be emphasized, I think, is the fact that uh, stress management is also something that needs to be, to pay, uh, to be paid attention to because that it does affect blood glucose. So I'm very glad you brought that up. Um, you talked about mindfulness, which is a form of meditation. And I know that, that when a lot of people hear about uh, meditation, they, they have some kind of strange pictures in their head of, of sitting cross-legged, wearing a, a, a special garment on top of a mountain, making funny sounds. Mindfulness is not exactly that difficult, is it? Not at all, not at all, and um, you know, just as I mentioned, how things take practice. Um, it, it's really just a way of um, kind of noticing, bringing that awareness to your life, to your surroundings, to your thoughts, what's going on, and and not having any judgment about it, and not feeling like you need to control it, or want to control it, or change it. And so the practice part here with, with the med meditation can just be helpful to almost train your mind um, to, to notice those things and to not react to those things. The, 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 yeah, it's, it's not as hard as it sounds. You don't have to take lessons to just quiet down and pay attention to your thoughts. And you don't have to clear your mind because really for most of us that's not possible. Just being more aware of of uh, even even mindful eating. Uh, there's a lot being written about that. Taking time to turn off the TV and to pay attention to what your food tastes like and to eat slowly and 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 try to enjoy the moment of, of eating because we all enjoy that. Exactly. Um, uh, one final point that I, I, I want to re-emphasize and I'm so glad you brought this up because it's so important. We, we all uh, we we all pick up our behaviors and our way of looking at the world and our way of reacting to things from the people who are around us. And the point that I don't think we can emphasize enough is the importance, like you said, of identifying someone who you know who just seems to be that person who life doesn't seem to get to them. Someone who's, who's resilient. Somebody who, who things tend to roll off their back. For me, it's my aunt. Uh, the, woman, the woman's amazing. Uh, I see, it seems that the, the, the person you discussed, uh, the, the, the client that 
that you mentioned earlier who had the medical error, even though this this really terrible thing happened, she was able to hold on just by not she can't change the situation, but by changing her thoughts and the way she looked at the situation. So uh, it's so important to find someone that you know, even if it's a celebrity or someone in your life who 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 has that resilience and try to do what they do. Try to react to things in the way that they react or don't react. So that's very important. Yes. Uh, once again, I, I know that our time is short. Anna, thank you again. For, like, like I said, I, I know you put a, a great deal of work into this, and hopefully we can, we can add to it in the, in the weeks to come. Um, and, and also, uh, thanks to all of you who are listening to this. Hopefully you, you got some, some good information from it, and, and hopefully it will help with your own stress management techniques. For On Life Health, I'm Michael Detner. Thank you for joining us, and have a great day.